This is 6141. In this video, I'm going to show some common uh, mistakes people make when they try to program the uh, flash using the Ulink NT or USB JTAG NT. This is the back of the board and this is the flash. And the clip I'm going to use is something like this. And it's not the expensive one. And I'm having the uh, adapter like this and the connector here normally used for programmer and we are going to use connection for the U-Link here. The mistake number one is people have the clip and they clip it on, assume this will work. And if you look carefully closely on, on this side and the way that connect, I have a chip here. And if you just, you know, randomly click like this, there will be very little chance the contact of these metals will contact the uh, pins properly because the way it's designed, I don't know if I can have this clear enough. So let me connect here and let me focus it. So the proper connection actually you need to slightly push over, slightly push over to make the proper connection. So if you think you make the connection and do not detect it, very good chance is this is not make good contact. And when I, when I do the connection is I will go as low as, as far as possible and then click on it. You know, if you just easily click on the contacts seem to be loose, but if you go like this, hold firmly and click on, the contact is much better. So, so the you know, if I just click on something like this, it will be very top, you know, high, and the metal is is not contact. But if I open a little bit up and push down, then slowly release it, the contact is much better. This is the typical setup here, and this is. Th power supply, I have turned on 3.3 volt and I have the proper clamp here and this is the Union Canty connected. Uh, also the power supply is here and let's detect. And we can. So I'm going to show you the next mistake. So first I power this off and let's unplug USB. So I'm making the connection as I said, I just, you know, connect like this, connect like this and then I plug in and the power on and you see we cannot detect it. Even though it looks proper connected here, and I cannot connect it. That's the first mistake I talk about. We need to make proper connection. Now, a lot. Of the second mistake is very important. Is people when they cannot detect, they trying to wiggle this, and that's bad, because in order to wiggle it, you have to first power off it, and then unplug this one. Then you can try to wiggle or make. You know, the way that I make a connection is just to push a little further. And then I power on and let's see if we can detect. Yes, we can. So the second mistake is trying to make connection contact here when there is a power on either side and trying to wiggle it. What I did is I power off the unit as well as I unplug the USB. Then I make the connection and you can tell the difference by uh, the previous one, which we, we, we cannot detect. And this one we can detect. The connection is much firm this way. Next mistake is the power supply. And sometimes I see people use this kind of module, they call it TTL. And because mark at the end, they say 3.3 volt, they believe this will be a good power supply. Uh, I tried this unit on 6141, it does work, okay? The reason for that is, you know, look at the amperage here, This provide 3.3 volt when we do get connected it's only dry the 180 milliamps and if that's the case actually 3.3 volt from the u-link nt itself is sufficient to power on it so if you just talk about 6141 
yes, you can use a Unink NT provide 3.3 volt. However, some other mod, uh, modems like uh, um, big ones I, I showed a few uh, videos ago, they have like 800 milliamps and then this will not be a good source as well as not like here because this one only provide maybe, you know, 400, 300 milliamps and better options like this, you know, not only it shows power voltage as well as the amperage and then we can know it's, if it's safe or not to do it. So mistake uh, not using the good power supply. The next mistake people may make is they believe they have 3.3 volts on it, but they forget to put the uh, the ground on it. So the ground of the board and the ground of the unit canty and the ground of the power supply need to connect together. So if you look at here, I have a ground pin, which is the white go to the board and here. So contact the board as well as here, the negative here connect to the ground. So the ground pin needs to be connected. The next mistake is about the WP pin and the, uh, the hold pin. Uh, in this setup here, WP pin and the hold pin does not necessarily need to be connected to the power and we were able to do the erase and the program. So if you find you can detect and read properly, but you are not able to erase and program it, then good chance is you do not have the WP pin and hold pin connected. Let's look at the um, data sheet here. So on the on the data sheet here, we need to have the hold pin and W pin needs to both high. If it fails, you need to measure here on the chip here. It is high or not. Normally, you just need to connect the W pin and the hold pin to hold pin to the power supply, and that will allow you to erase and program. Last one I'm going to show people is what if I do not have the clip and people say, you know, I have the Unink NT, but I do not have the clip and can I still program? The answer is yes. And here I'm going to show you how to make the connection without the clip. I, you only need a cable like this, which one side is 10 pins. The other side is float. And I'm going to solder the wires to the pin head here. And it's actually, it's even better contact than the clip itself. However, you need to, you know, ex do extra step, you know, solder it on when programming and desolder it when it's de uh, uh, finished the programming. So this is the board. I have soldered the uh, pin on it. And for simplicity, I use the power from the Unink NT because we know it's only 100 and below 200 milliamps. And this is safe to draw the less than 200 milliamps uh, power from the Unink NT and it will not damage. But if you look at the soldering, it's very clean. And actually the contact is better than the clip. So now let's see how we can program it. So plug the USB in and as simple as this one and not no glue wires. And now let's detect the flash and we can. So let's do um, read the entire flash. Let's first empty everything and let's read it. Clearly we can read it. For demonstration purpose, I'm going to erase the boot, so which will be erased. And it's erased, so let's see if boot is still erased. Of course, because the target is empty, let's write it. And if we can verify, yes, we can. So the very simple solution without clip is just to solder the wires on it, and it works. So 
no ne not necessarily need to wait for the clip the clip is is convenient for if you have more modems you don't want to program one and try another one if you only have one modem to program soldering is not a bad option and it's it's quick and it, as long as you have a solder iron and have a basic technique and it's a better option than the clip itself